What's going on guys? Welcome to your 12th Java tutorial. Again with me Travis and my bring back. What we're going to do in this tutorial, we're going to learn a little bit more about math and which primitive data types we want to use. Um, because you know math is an essential thing in programming, especially game development. Um, so hopefully you guys listened in your algebra and your like physics classes and all that stuff because we're going to be using it quite a bit later on down the road. But as for now, we just want to learn about which type of variables we want to use when we uh, work with math. So let's get into it. First type of variable I want to talk about is something called an int, which we are somewhat familiar with. We're going to create an int called a. We're going to set this a equal to be 10. Now an int value can't take any decimal places. And it can only take whole numbers. That's what an integer is. And we're also going to set another int equal to 20. So now let's create another data type called a long. And we're going to call this c. And we're going to set this equal to something crazy long like that. So we're going to just set up some more variables. Um, basically a long allows us to take more information for integer. And we're getting an error right now because it's out of the range. So let's just take off some places here. And we should be good, um, I suppose. All right, so there there we go, we're in the range. So as you can see, both the int and the long take whole numbers or integers, and the int value or integer is a shorter number, and when we wanna work with larger numbers that are whole numbers, we wanna use something called a long. But let's say we wanna work with decimal places. Let's say we're like creating a cash register uh, that calculates the value of items, and we wanna work with dollars and pennies, obviously we're going to need a decimal place. So what we want to create is something called a float value. So we're going to create a float int, uh, variable called e. We're going to set this equal to buck fifty, something like that. And the thing about float values is it's defined a little bit differently. All we have to do at the end of our float value, we have to type the letter f to say that it is a float value. And I'll explain why that is here in a second, but let's create another float value. We're going to call this f. We're going to set this float value to equal like 375, something like that. And as you can see, we get an error if we don't put that f at the end. So we're going to create an f value as well. Now, the reason we put this f value is because there's also something called a double. And a double is pretty much dealing with decimal places as well. But, uh, you know, it allows us more precision when we're working with very small numbers or very large numbers that take decimal places. So let's create a couple du double values and I'll talk about what all these values mean at the end again as well. But now as you can see we can put a value like 0.3 you know whatever and uh, another double value we're going to call this h and we're just going to set this equal to a, uh, a larger number. So like um, that for example. So these are the, pretty much uh, the basic um, primitive types of variables that we want to use when we're dealing with math. So again, um, the int is kind of a smaller number that is a whole number, um, but if we need larger int values or integer values, we're going to use something called a long, as you can see here. Now also if we want to deal with decimal places, again we have a float value and a double value. A float value, as you can see here, it takes a decimal place but it's not very precise. I'm not giving you guys the range groups yet. I'll paste that on the screen right now. As you can see, the range is here. But a float value, again, we can work with decimal places, but it's not very precise. But uh, if we want to get even more precise when working with very large numbers or very small numbers that use decimal places, we want to use something called a double. And as you can see up here in my comments that I created here, an int value, as you can see, it takes like negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion uh, long. You know, I don't even know how to pronounce this number. I probably could figure it out if I wanted to, but I don't want to take the time. And for a float value, I definitely don't want to figure out this number because it's e to the negative 45th, um, as you can see there. Very small number, a very large number. But even if we need more precise values, you know, crazy, uh, if we're working with like atoms, like molecules and stuff like that, and the collision and the, you know, the physics of that, we probably want to use something called a double. It also takes e to the negative 324th decimal. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the range groups. If you guys want to write it down, that's cool. If not, you know, that's, that's fine as well. 
But again, those are pretty much the variable types that we're going to be using when we work with math, work with physics, work with all the stuff in Java. So again, that's probably pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll get into math operators and stuff like that, you know, all that fun stuff. So make sure you check that out, and I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one.